Welcome back to the VC3 News Update. First in our local news stories. A hurricane watch remains in effect for SVG as tropical storm Gonzalo approaches the southern Windward Islands. Gonzalo is a small tropical storm with storm force winds extending up to 25 miles from the center. Storm conditions with wind speeds up near 55 to 74 miles per hour are expected across our area on Saturday and to reach hurricane strength near 74 miles per hour or higher. Showers and thunderstorm activity would increase across SVG tonight as Gonzalo moves closer to the islands. By tomorrow, Saturday, rainfall accumulations of 75 to 100 millimeters with greater amounts in isolated area could result in life-threatening flash floods in low-lying areas. Large easterly swells of 3.0 to 4.0 meters are likely across our islands late Saturday, creating unsafe conditions for small craft operators and sea bathers. All residents are advised to keep informed on the progress of this system and pay close attention to updates being issued by the SVG Met Services. Speaking to the nation yesterday, Prime Minister Dr. The Honorable Rav Gonzalez said he convened a meeting of the National Emergency Council 10, at 10.30 a.m. yesterday morning at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs Conference Room. I convened a meeting of the National Emergency Council at the conference room of the Minister of, Minister of Foreign Affairs, where all the agencies of the government, everybody from the cabinet, all the permanent secretaries, heads of department, um, VINLEC, CWSA, um, uh, telecommunication providers, everybody, the police, the Coast Guard, everybody, um, all of them were briefed by the Met Services on the approach of tropical storm Gonzalo and urged to put all systems in place for its potential impact. In other words, we are preparing just in case we have a hit from Gonzalo. As Prime Minister, I'm taking the storm very seriously and I want you to do the same. Gonzalo has the potential to develop into a hurricane and impact our island. I urge you not to take this storm lightly. As if it continues on its current path, it can impact St. Vincent and the Grenadines. We have to be careful. We have to be cautious. We have to be prudent. Prime Minister Gonsalves stated that during this hurricane season, there would be several measures that will be implemented at the emergency shelters as we continue to manage the COVID-19 pandemic in SVG. Therefore, all persons entering emergency shelters would be required to wear a mask. All persons entering the emergency shelters must wear face masks. On arrival at the emergency shelter, your temperature will be checked and taken daily, and all the protocols of the Ministry of Health will be observed. Families will be placed together, and distance between families or individuals in the shelter will be maintained. If you go to the emergency shelter and have any flu-like symptoms or not feeling well, I'm asking you please to report it to the shelter manager, and you will be placed in a separate area. For persons who have tested positive, for the COVID-19 virus and have not been cleared by the Ministry of Health and need shelter, please contact the Ministry of Health at the earliest opportunity, even from now, before anything happens on Saturday, if anything happens on Saturday. If you know you have tested positive for COVID-19, and where you are, you might be in your own home, and it may be a good home for the purposes of protecting yourself and family in relation to COVID-19. But you may not be able to stay there because of the rains and if the winds are as high as the winds potentially can be in the current situation. 
you're clearly going to need shelter. But if you're positive with COVID-19, you can't be expected to go inside of the shelter because you're going to, you're likely to infect persons there. So we'll have to put you somewhere else. But if you need that, you have to tell us, tell the Ministry of Health early, even before the shelter opens. Don't leave it until late because we'll have to make the necessary arrangements. I, I just want you to hear me on that. Please. The Prime Minister urged the nation to take all the necessary precautions to protect life and property and to continue to listen to all the Met Service releases from NEMO. Again, I'm urging you to take all the necessary precautions to protect life and property. Continue to listen to the updates from the Met Services and all releases from NEMO. Stock up on water, food, medicines and emergency supplies. If your house is not safe, make arrangements now to stay with friends and family. If not, then know where your nearest emergency shelter is and move ahead of the storm. Do not wait until the strong winds and heavy rains begin. By then, it would be unsafe for you to go out. Do not go out during the passage of the storm as you may endanger your life and that of your family. Stay indoors until the all clear has been given by Nemo. This means only go outside when Nemo announces it is safe to do. That is if the storm hits. And you have to listen to us, and listen to Nemo on an ongoing basis because we'll provide you with the information. Do not take Tropical Storm Gonzalo for granted. I repeat, as the system has the potential to produce gusty and storm force winds and heavy to moderate showers and rough seas. St. Vincent and the Grenadines Meteorological Services and the, the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, will continue to monitor the passage of Tropical, tropical Storm Gonzalo and provide regular updates. Let's take this seriously and be prepared. Also locally, speaking on VC3's Roundtable Talk program on Wednesday, Chief Medical Officer Dr. Simone Kiza Beach said with the increase of COVID-19 cases in the U.S., the anticipated cases in SVG to rise as well. This follows the return of international flights to SVG out of the United States. Dr. Kiza Beach said the focus of the Ministry of Health is on early detection. We anticipated cases, um, and that's why our focus was, going, was always going to be on early detection of these cases and the quarantining. And that's why the, the, the matter of keeping them safely quarantined, isolated, um, understanding that even when you, you get onto a flight in Miami and you have a negative PCR in hand, when you come off of the flight in St. Vincent, you have been exposed. Mm -hmm. And, and that, de detecting that exposure doesn't take place with the swab on arrival. That swab on arrival is going to detect anything you picked up five days, in the five days coming. So therefore, we have to test another period after to detect what happened during the flight. So this was always has been our plan of really very tight um, monitoring and testing, recognizing that the exposure is going to take place on the flight. Um, and we needed to be able to test at a time where we would have a proper yield. So the main challenge has been the um, ensuring that we pick up those cases coming out of the flight and maintain those positive persons in isolation and the quarantine of the others who might not even be aware that they have now, you know, carrying the virus and the risk that they pose to Vincentians in country. 
CMO Beach said there is an online system where persons can register before they come in and she made the appeal for such persons to use the system. And we would like persons to do that because you put in your information, you indicate whether or not you have a, um, a, a test done and it gives us an idea of, of the risk levels even mm -hmm. from before, you know. Um, so we encourage persons to fill that out. We had some challenges. It's a new system. The internet didn't work all the time. Persons went accustomed. And so we've had some challenges with that. But that is being resolved. We're working with the developers for that. American Airlines also facilitated the use of hard copy um, forms, which were filled out. So you, bring, you come off of the flight, and we were working with the AIA, um, attempting to ensure that there are physical distancing, everybody wears a mask, you come in and then you assess by the healthcare workers. Meanwhile, infectious disease specialist Dr. Gerald Thompson said that a number of persons who attempt to get tested in the United States find that the results are delayed for almost seven days. He, however, stated that a number of passengers are getting tests within three to five days, thereby satisfying what is required locally whilst there are some of who are forced to wait until the day they arrive for those test results and still don't receive them. It's something what exasperating to some individuals. I've seen them there trying to pull up their results online, hoping that it came in on the day that they are, uh, actually arrived, but it didn't. And as a result, they, even though they might have had a test two, three days before, they would still have to go through the complete process of getting a repeat test again. And so it's my hope that in the destination country that persons are able to get a quick test and that the quality of the test that they get, where they get it from, that that test is authentic and that they could get the proper result um, online. And we, we, we know, you've seen all these different type of papers and well, so I coming through. I just to ask you, how do you know what is <laughs> well, genuine and well, what isn't? Well, I'll tell you something. There are ways of looking at these things, and I, I, I'm assist, I've been assisting with looking at these forms, these testing forms, having practiced in the United States before, and you're able to see certain things. But the, the issue is not so much that these forms are not authentic. It's that um, we are able to recognize that some people have been properly tested and that those who have not got their results back yet, we are then able to have them go through to the team. And i tell you something, it's a, a marvelous process, that whole team uh, um, approach. That one, Dr. Duncan, they do a marvelous job and so forth. Dr. Gerald Thompson called upon the general public to adhere to the protocols and to wear a face mask so as to control the spread of COVID-19 in SVG. For most of the rest of the year, you know, and into next year, we are going to be dealing with COVID-19. Mm -hmm. We're going to see our relatives trying to return to St. Vincent for whatever reason. We're going to see students and we're going to see other persons coming back for all sorts of different things, business and so on we're going to have to deal with it. And the protocols we put in place are measured, they are robust, and we have to be able to adjust them and mm -hmm. change them and put them in place with the level of force that we need to. Now, I want to, I want to appeal to everybody once again. You know, let us go back to basics. Yeah. You know, let's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be taking that example. I'll be wearing more of, of a mask. I want you to do that. The issues of ownership of land at the Bookermans Bay Hotel have been resolved, allowing for hotel development in the area to move forward seamlessly. Last week, two men who own lands at Bookermans told the Searchlight newspaper that the offer of EC $10 per square foot being made by the government for their land was insufficient. However, Minister of Finance Camilla Gonsalves yesterday said that some of the farmers have agreed to sell their land outright, while others have decided that they want different parcels of land in exchange and other considerations. The Finance Minister said the farmers who have sold their land outright have agreed to accept $12 a square, f a square foot, 
which he said is far in excess to the value of agricultural land in that area. He said land size being dealt with would usually be valued per acre and not by the square foot. But there were considerations other than market value that justified an increase in price in the interest of fairness, the minister said. He disclosed that some farmers will get parcels of land in exchange, some will have their houses rebuilt and receive money for crops, tilling and tractor services. Some of the farmers have also asked for time to allow them to reap their crops. The July 21, 2020 publication of the Government Gazettes states that 46.82 acres of land at Bookament were acquired by Harlequin Property SVG Limited in bankruptcy. Harlequin Properties Caribbean Limited, Simon Roberts, Granville Slater, Noel Brown, Gregory Edwards, and Bernard Ponette. The minister said although the land was acquired, that, that was only done after consensus was reached with the farmers. He said they should be paid their money as soon as within 10 days' time. On Wednesday, government signed a contract that will see the building of a beaches branded resort by Sandals and Beach Resorts Inc. on 40 acres of land at the Bookermans Bay location. The Roads Building and General Services Authority Braxa is spending over half a million dollars to construct a concrete road in Riverdale, Pembroke. The project, which started in mid-June, will also see the construction of slipper and box drains. It has been done at an estimated cost of $550,000 EC dollars. Work on the 1,100 feet concrete road is scheduled to be completed by the end of August. Meanwhile, similar work is being carried out on the Old Flower Mill Road in West Kingstown, as well as the Leyu Quarry Road in Central Leeward. Maniwan Road in Bridgetown Bayabu and the Trumaker Ridge and Carnaby Roads in North Leeward. Braxa is urging the public to take the necessary precautions between the hours of 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday to Friday. Work in these areas is also expected to be completed in August. That's our local stories. Next, regionally, Trinidad and Tobago political candidates start rigorous campaign.